G'day folks, it's me again. I hope you're all having a Merry Christmas. I know I am. Since it's Christmas, I thought I'd get this very special old lamp out and maybe fire it up. What this is, is an Osram GEC 400 watt medium pressure mercury vapour lamp. Kicks out about 16,000 lumens, colour temperature of 5,400 Kelvin and a very poor colour rendering index. This is a quite a late example of a medium pressure lamp that dates from September 1962. Obviously by that stage it was already made obsolete by the high pressure mercury vapour lamp with quartz arc tubes but obviously these lamps were made for quite a while for replacement purposes. Obviously the medium pressure mercury lamp was the first successful mercury lamp for general lighting applications it was developed in 1931 by Osram GEC of England, introduced in 1932, and it was very successful. By 1933, the technology being licensed to the European manufacturers, and in 1934, it was licensed to the Americans, and it was adopted worldwide. Obviously, these are made medium pressure lamps because of the arc tubes are made from aluminosilicate hard glass, so it has quite a low softening temperature compared to the later quartz so they're not very efficient but obviously 1930s technology it was the best you could do at the time so anyway let's have a closer look and then we'll fire it up I've never actually fired this up before and I don't see any evidence that it has ever actually been fired up at all so it'll be quite interesting just looking at one of the electrodes at the top of the lamp it's a transverse C6 open coil inside there's a thorium pellet which acts as an emitter quite interesting because obviously later on all lamps had axial mounted electrodes but obviously this is transverse for whatever reason they chose but that's how they did it you can see the one of two spring supports for the quite large arc tube which was quite good at dampening vibrations and shocks. At the cap end we can see the other electrode and in between the two lead wires is the auxiliary starting electrode and its associated resistor. The etch at the top of the lamp has worn off over time but it's still readable if you hold a bright torch behind it but on the brass cap it says 230, 240 volts, 400 watts. On the other side of the cap, we can see the letters HMG, which probably stands for Her Majesty's Government, and you also see the broad arrow symbol. So at one stage, this was probably War Department or Ministry of Defence stock, which would explain why it's lasted so long. It's probably been sat in some government stores for decades. But anyway, uh, you're not here to see this. What you're here to see is it being fired up. So without further ado, I'm going to get my 400 watt mercury vapor gearbox out and we're going to put power to it. See if it blows up or not. Anyway. Right, so I've got the lamp in the socket. I've got the power supply hooked up. These lamps are designed to run vertical base up or base down. But for the interest of getting a decent shot, I've turned the camera on its side. So it might look like it's burning horizontal, it's not. It's vertical cap up. So without further ado, power in 3, 2, 1, 0. Oh. That's beautiful. That's a really low pressure discharge. Look at all that mercury on the side. You'll see all that start to evaporate. Nice hum from the ballast there as well. Wow, that's a lovely blue colour. Fantastic. Just adjusting the ND filter.
That's beautiful. Yeah. That's really, really nice. You can actually see where it's a really, really diffused arc because the at full power these run at about one atmosphere which is a lot lower than a high pressure mercury lamp you can see it start to uh, constrict at the bottom play with a bit more ND filter actually I'll close the aperture And we can back off. That is a beautiful light blue colour. Although the sensitivity of the camera is picking up some green. To the naked eye it's completely pure blue. You can see the uh, mercury vapour condensed on the wall there starting to evaporate. Our voltage is only 40 volts. We're pulling about 4.6 amps. So yeah. They start off at really low voltage, like 17 or 18 volts. The full run current is uh, probably around 130 volts. So 46 volts we're at at the minute. Oh, you can see some uh, emitter falling off there and vaporizing. That's what I think it is, anyway. Let's tone it down a bit, see if we can see more detail. Well, I think that confirms that this has never, ever been lit before if it's doing that. Still only at 70 volts, 4 amps. Full run corners of this should be about 3.25. Close the aperture a bit more, get a bit more depth of field. And then we can obviously reduce the ND filter. So yeah, as far as I know, this is the first time this lamp has been powered up since 1962. So it's been a few minutes. Can't imagine there's many of these in service at the minute. Probably the only type in the world which is burning right now. Although they are quite common in the collectors. They are. They do seem to pop up on eBay every now and again for varying amounts of stupidest stu stu stupendous amounts of money so yeah you can hear the glass and the support frame creaking as it gets warm we're at 111 volts 3.5 amps so yeah We're almost at full power. It is a really horrible light to be honest. It's making reds look brown, 
it's making my skin look really like horrible and yeah it's probably worse than low pressure sodium because at least at low pressure sodium you can get away with wow what was that then yeah yeah I was saying you can get away with the low color rendering on low pressure because it's such a warm light that noise you can hear I don't know if, don't know if you can hear it but that's sort of like tinny rattle that's coming from the lamp that's the lamp itself which is uh, rattling hmm. 3.3 amps 127 volts pretty much full power so I'm going to switch to the macro lens I'll try and tweak the white balance to get a true representation of the colour and uh, be back in a minute for the close-ups there's a shot of the top electrode and you can see the auxiliary starting electrode above it and I don't know if you can make it out on your screen but there is a tiny streamer coming from that auxiliary electrode to the main electrode so obviously there is some leakage there that resistor is obviously not quite high enough and that's uh, quite a nice view there's the lower one it's off to one side yeah it's quite a fascinating lamp the arc tube is massive as well compared to a high pressure one we're running at 3.25 amps as exactly 130 volts yeah so we, let's try a pan up you can see the arc tube support some imperfections on the glass another spring there's the uh, tip where it was evacuated and the top electrode again so yeah I hope you found that interesting uh, thanks for watching if you're still here and Merry Christmas so I'm gonna get some stills and then I'm gonna power it off and then put it away safely so yeah bye bye now